Do you have kids? Or maybe have one on the way? Most of my friends who are married with kids think that if they die without a will, their spouse will get everything. My friends are always surprised to find out that their kids would inherit more of their estate than their spouse under the default rules in Quebec. And there are similar provisions in other provinces depending on the size of your estate. To make matters worse, the curateur public in Quebec gets involved any time a child under age 18 inherits more than $25,000. I hope that by now I've convinced you that if you don't have a proper will yet, you should move this to the top of your to-do list. You probably already have a general sense that it's important to document how you want your finances to be handled when you're not around, especially when there are others counting on you to be there for them. But what does it take to get that done? I'm Peter Gay of PWL Capital, and in today's Do It Together segment, I'm gonna get you started on the why, what, and how of writing a will. First, some good news. It's not as complicated as you think. At least, it doesn't have to be. I get it. Odds are, you'll raise your children and eventually babysit their children. That means you've already got a million things on your mind related to your kids' upbringing. Daycare, school, figuring out when to give them their own cell phone, and more. On top of that, it's never fun to contemplate your own mortality. But there's one thing I can guarantee. It's a lot easier to plan for your death when you're still alive. I've chosen this topic as the first one I want to cover in my new Do It Together financial planning series, because it's just that important. Almost everyone I know tends to procrastinate on getting it done, and yet the stakes are so high. No matter how carefully you've otherwise secured your family's future, it can all come undone in the blink of an eye. First, let me repeat the good news. I think one of the reasons so many families put off creating their will is that they actually overthink it. Of course, there are circumstances that call for more complex estate planning. But if you're a typical family with a house, maybe a cottage, and a few investment accounts, you don't have to build a huge pile of legal paperwork. A few basic documents will do it. Specifically, I recommend parents each establish a will, a power of attorney, and a mandate, or living will, to ensure that your intentions are respected and your critical responsibilities can continue to be managed no matter what happens to you. Essentially, you've got three tasks in front of you. First, you need to be a sound mind when you create these legal documents. While this can and does come into play for the elderly or infirm, hopefully you've already got this one covered. By the way, this is another reason to take care of things today, so your loved ones will have one less awful thing to worry about if you are unexpectedly incapacitated. Next, you want to answer these three questions. One, who should get your assets? These are your beneficiaries. How much will each receive and when? What are the tax implications of giving to your spouse, for instance, or your kids? If you're giving to your kids, should they get it all right away or after a certain age? God forbid the whole family dies in a plane or a car crash, then what? These are all the sorts of questions you might want to discuss with your financial advisor before sitting down with your lawyer or notary. Two, who will administer your estate? This is called your executor, or in Quebec, your liquidator. Ensuring that your estate is liquidated and distributed according to your wishes and managed appropriately until the distributions are completed is a big responsibility. Be sure the people you designate are comfortable with the role. They should ideally have a financial or legal background or at least be in a position to hire this sort of counsel. No one expects your executor to know all the ins and outs of settling an estate, but you need to know that they'll turn to the right professionals for help in getting it all done. And make sure to talk to them about just assigning them the responsibility. As I said before, it's a big one. Three, who will take care of your kids and the assets you leave for them? You don't have to choose the same person or people to do both of these roles. As with the administrator of your estate, talk to the people you're thinking of delegating these things. You want to make sure that they're comfortable with the responsibility that you're giving them. As you're thinking through these three key questions, you'll get going on your third task, which is reflecting your answers within those three documents, your will, your power of attorney, and your mandate, or living will. These combine to take care of your loved ones should you pass away, and to take care of you and your interests should you become incapacitated. Next up, I'll take a closer look at those three documents, how they fit together, what each one does, and why you want to work at them as a matched set. And here's one more simple thing that you can do to stay on top of your estate planning and related interests. Sign up for my Do It Together YouTube channel about financial planning, where I'll be covering wills and many other ways to make sure that your financial future is safe. I'm Peter Gay, and this is my Do It Together YouTube channel on financial planning.